Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. Now in our previous video we saw how we could use a batch operation to insert more than one record um, through a single OData call to the server. Uh, we want to build on that concept and that technique and talk about something that's called a deep insert. So this is the specialized kind of operation where you want to uh, insert more than one record at a time but they have a relationship to one another. For instance, I want to create both the purchase order header and the purchase order item. And I need to generate the key, the unique ID for the purchase order header, and then use that same key in the item so that they're associated. Um, now, even if we batch send them together uh, using the technique that we learned in the previous uh, uh, video, that wouldn't necessarily guarantee that they are going to be associated with one another. And, and it's not going to give us the opportunity to share the unique ID from uh, the header and the item because each one's going to be processed still on the server as its own record and, and could be parallelized. So what we want to do is we want to um, uh, utilize a part of the batch operation called a content ID. And what that's going to allow us to do is group together related records in a batch, so like the header and the item ID, and also define that certain attributes uh, share a content ID. And, and what that will do is it will allow, in the case of like the purchase order header and purchase order item, on the server side, we will, of course, insert the purchase order header. And when we do that, we'll generate a unique ID. And for the subsequent records that we associate as children, we won't have to pass an ID from the client side. We'll, we'll pass a placeholder content ID. And then on the server side, it will take that content ID and, and use it and replace it with the value that was generated from the header record. So it's a very, it's a very efficient way to, to be able to insert related records, generate the unique ID once, and then share it with all the children records without having to do any kind of complicated processing or passing of the data back and forth between the client and server. It can be a completely uh, server-side operation. And all we have to do on the client side is, is tell it which attributes are basically linked up via this content ID. And let's just close out the example. And as it turns out, we already have a service that is set up for this. Uh, so let's look here at our XSJS. And one of these that we imported called business partner addresses. We've already prepared. We've got a business partner entity. That's our parent. And then the child is the address. And it is a simple one-to-one. Um, but it means when we create the business partner, we also want to create the address in a separate table, but we want to associate the two. We want the address ID to be generated at the time that we insert the business partner, but then use the same address ID when we insert the address so that the two records are joined up. And if we look, we have an exit handler for this as well, where we have a, a before processor for the... Uh, for the business partner, we have an address before, you know, just doing validation, generating the, the unique ID. We're getting the business partner ID. We're getting the address ID from, from sequences. Uh, but the really important part here is we actually have an association exit as well. This is something we haven't seen up to this point, but um, the association is what links the two things together. And it almost becomes... Um, an insert here, an insert here, and then an update to process the association. Uh, so what will end up happening here with the update is we'll get the principal data, we'll get the dependent data, so we'll get the record that was inserted here for the business partner and the record that was inserted for the address. And what we can do is go back and update the business partner and set its address ID to the whatever address that we just created in, um, in the second operation. So we'll send two records to the server, but three operations will be performed, two inserts, and then uh, an update as well. Um, 
this is a little different than maybe the uh, the scenario that I described with uh, header and item. This is actually a little bit more complicated scenario uh, than just header and item, because in the header, we only have to insert the header and then use that ID uh, in all the subsequent items. Um, this is two independent inserts, and then we have to go back and update to, to associate them. But, but either can be done using the, tech, uh, the technology approach that we're going to use here. Okay. So now that we've seen our OData service, um, let's go create a, uh, a user interface. So we're going to create a very similar user interface here. Um, so let's, uh, let's just create a new one that is a um, folder. Let's call it OData Deep. And inside here we want to have our other editors. First, going to have our index HTML. Have our component JS. Have our manifest JSON. We're going to have our view. going to have our controller. Okay. So uh, we've prepared code snippets for these. So let's go back to our code snippet branch and get Once again, these are pretty similar. I'm not going to go over all the details of the index HTML and the components. None of that is uh, really any different here. Um, what is perhaps important, uh, our view. Let's do that next. Let's look at our app view. at it in the layout editor. So business partner details, company name, city, email. So city actually will go to the address table, company name and email will go to the business partner table. We don't realize that we're inserting into two different tables from the UI. Simple create record button, uh, but uh, uh, it's the logic on the back end that will be most interesting here. So next, um, Let's go grab our manifest. Also not too wildly different than what we've done in the past, but you'll see we're not going to create an OData model and an OData service object. The the deep kind of operation that we want to do here with setting the content IDs, we're going to have to work at a little lower level. We're going to have to build the OData request ourselves um, uh, so that we can set the content ID on the request header and, and create the multi parts to create the grouping ourselves. Um, well, we'll do that in a minute. First, let's, let's finish with the basic parts here. Let's go get the uh, component JS. And it looks just like our previous examples, not a whole lot going on inside of there. It's really the controller. This is where the interesting stuff is going to be happening. Uh, 33. All right, so let's take the complete controller. It looks like a lot of code, but it, it isn't really. It's just a few lines of code where of course, we have our initialization. We're creating our local model. Even when we have the button here that responds to the create service press, um, we're going to take the data from the screen and put it into a JSON object. Two different JSON objects, one for the business partner, one for the addresses. Up to this point, it looks pretty, pretty similar. But what we're going to do here, we're not going to create the OData model object. We're going to use... Um, uh, uh, an XML HTTP request uh, to make our own request to the server. Uh, we're going to do a post request to this URL. 
so far, nothing terribly different here. We are going to say it's a batch operation. But what you're seeing is a lot of the work that that OData model does for you. Uh, we've never had to worry about CSRF tokens. Uh, now we have to fetch our own uh, CSRF token for uh, for security validation. Uh, we have a little reusable function that does that, and we have to add it to the header. We have to uh, you know set all the low-level headers, the except JSON that we want to do a multi-part uh, uh, request, and our boundary is going to be called batch. This is how we can put multiple batches of data in here. Um, th this is how that batch operation worked in our previous example. This is what the OData model was creating behind the scenes for us. We have to set certain OData specific request headers. And then what you're seeing here is we're creating the raw body just by concatenating together a body string. But we have to put the parts in here. We have to set the, the batch and, and the, the boundary is a change set. And, and then we can have one or more change sets inside here. But basically what we're saying is we're defining a content ID. And we're going to call one uh, the content ID 1 uh, for the, uh, the unique key of the, uh, of the business partner. And then, uh, uh, and then we're going to say we want to post to the business partner. We're going to feed the, the raw data in here. We have to set the length. So once again, you're seeing all the beautiful things that the OData model does for you that now we're having to do ourselves in this case. Um, but then we see we set a second content ID, and this is uh, uh, this is going to be the unique uh, ID that comes back from the address or that gets generated by the address. Once again, this isn't having to come back from the client side. But then what we're able to do here is when we do uh, a third operation, which is going to be a put, so post or create. So we're going to create each individual record, the business partner, the address. Then we're going to say an update to the uh, association. But what we're going to say is, is part of the URL here is actually the dollar sign one. So that's going to be the result of the content ID one. So we're not having to know that key, that, that value on the client side. We're just telling the server, replace it when you do the processing on the server side with whatever key was generated by the, by the first post operation. And then inside the, the body here uh, in, the, in this link, uh, the, the O link, which we, um, uh, which we built here, uh, that's going to have the second content ID because that's what we're saying to, to link to. Um, and then we close out the change set and the batch. We don't have multiple change sets. We don't have multiple batches. We could have multiple batches. So if we wanted to create multiple business partners and addresses at a time, we could do that in one batch, but we put them in, into separate batch operations uh, with different change set IDs. Um, but basically there's our, there's our logic that we need. Um, we're pretty much done with our application. Let's go ahead and... Uh, and run this to pick up the change. We'll change our run configuration to point to OData deep now. Say save and run. And here we go. We can say group zero zero city demo city. We'll give it a valid email address. Group zero zero at sap.com. I will say create record. The business partner was created.